Hello, my name is Celito Rodriguez. This presentation is titled Engaging Stakeholders Through Social Networking How Nonprofit Organizations Are Using Facebook. Presented for my GRC 506 class Content Analysis. Here is the agenda for this presentation. I will state the purpose of it. What is content analysis? Was content analysis a suitable technique uh, for this study? I will discuss the validity and reliability of uh, the research study. Uh, I will discuss content of a study and the stakeholders and then I will uh, talk a little bit about the six categories of content analysis and whether those categories uh, were emphasized during the, uh, during the study. The uh, purpose of this presentation is basically to find out how nonprofit organizations can take advantage of uh, social networking sites such as uh, Facebook using a content analysis uh, research study that was conducted in 2006 by Richard D. Waters, Emily Burnett, Anna Lamb, and Jessica Lucas. So what is content analysis? Uh, it is important that before we dig into the presentation, we have uh, an idea what content analysis is. Well, content analysis is a research technique uh, used to make sense of qualitative data. Uh, it can be used to all forms of data, uh, especially written data, uh, conversations, uh, newspapers, uh, Facebook profiles, and, and uh, books, and that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, we're looking for uh, patterns and standards, and um, we also um, have to use a methodology uh, about uh, the, the data collection and the analysis of the text, and you know the kind of coding and significance that will be used in in the study. The first question that we need to answer is, was content analysis a suitable technique? And, and my answer to this is yes. Uh, it was a suitable technique because, um, first of all, content analysis is a very powerful data uh, reduction technique, uh, reduction on the amount of data that is available today on the internet. Uh, it is uh, systematic. It is a replicable technique, uh, basically meaning that uh, any other group or any other team can go ahead and 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 do the uh, the research, and they will come with the same answer. Um, it, it compresses many words of text into fewer categories, and uh, one of the most important thing is the content analysis is an unobtrusive method of gathering information. In the case of this study, we're talking about uh, Facebook profiles. And so those profiles are always available. Uh, you can just go to them and look at the data that is presented. So again, uh, yes, this was a suitable technique uh, used for this research study. Another point that we need to discuss uh, in this presentation is the uh, validity, and validity and reliability uh, of the method. And um, so content analysis produces a stable and consistent result. Um, same results can be replicated. Data is uncontaminated. And data is always available. So uh, in the case of um, uh, Facebook um, uh, uh, profiles, you can basically just go there. The data is widely available. It, it's open to the public. So you can go at any time 
and uh, replicate and redo the analysis and, and you'll come with the results so uh, in the case of this study uh, yes the validity and reliability uh, of this study is it's very strong the content of study and its stakeholders um, in this um, research um, it was basically uh, a content analysis of 275 randomly sampled legally incorporated nonprofit organizations profile uh, that was conducted. Um, it, it is uh, my opinion that this is a, a very good sample, uh, you know, 255 uh, randomly selected. Um, it, it's a very good number of profiles to um, to look at, you know, patterns and um, and standards. And, and again, so the stakeholders in this, um, basically anyone interested in this, and the number of organizations that are interested in finding out how um, nonprofit organizations are used in Facebook. Uh, we do know that uh, for-profit organizations um, have used uh, Facebook since its initial, um, right, since they started allowing company having profiles uh, to expand their public relations. But uh, before this study, uh, basically there was no way of finding out or of knowing how non-profit organizations were taking advantage of uh, social networking. So, um, I guess that the most important stakeholders in the studies are uh, non-profit organizations themselves because with this study they can basically uh, see what they're doing and what they should do uh, in order to take advantage of uh, social networks like uh, Facebook. The six uh, categories of content analysis are extrapolations, uh, standards, indices and symptoms, linguistic representations, conversations, and institutional processes, uh, as discussed in, in, the, um, in, in the book for this class. Um, extrapolation can be subdivided into trends, patterns, and differences. Uh, standards um, could also be subdivided into identifications, evaluations, and judgments. Uh, I believe that uh, Facebook is a great place to uh, look at uh, human interactions in all kinds of forms in in in, in texts because people basically you know uh, communicate they have conversations they they express their emotions their emotions um, so we can find a lot of you know trends patterns uh, differences uh, one of the uh, the things in, in this study was that um, uh, they found out, for example, that uh, a lot of nonprofit organizations um, are not taking advantage of, of, of social uh, networking uh, in the same way that for-profit organizations are taking advantage. Uh, here is a table that shows the uh, representation of the 265, uh, 75 profiles that were uh, studied. Uh, we can see that uh, they look at uh, different sectors, uh, arts and humanities, education, health, uh, human services, uh, public and uh, society benefit and, and religion organizations. So this is a very ample margin. So it look as um, you know the different categories that are emphasized in uh, content analysis and then uh, in each of those uh, type of institutions or organizations they um, they look at different categories for example uh, disclosure uh, how many of those company had a description of the company a history uh, of the organization the mission statement the URL the logo uh, administrator listed over there uh, then they looked at the uh, information dissemination and then they try to find out um, how many of those organizations had news links or, or, or photo posted on their profiles, uh, video files, audio files, and, and that kind of stuff. 
uh, they also looked at uh, involvement. Um, how many of those organizations um, had their email address over there so that people could e interact and communicate with them? Uh, how many of them had the phone number, uh, the message board used, uh, calendar of events, and, and all that kind of stuff? And there's a lot of interesting numbers. I think that, um, I mean, this study was conducted in 2006. Um, Facebook has grown tremendously since, <laughs> since those dates. And I am absolutely sure that uh, uh, the way that nonprofit organizations use Facebook today is completely different. I am absolutely sure that all of these numbers have increased dramatically. Uh, but in a nutshell, um, yes, this was a um, great study, and I think that it revealed a lot of information that uh, it was known for uh, for profit organization, but not for non-profit organization. All right, so we arrived to the conclusion of this uh, short presentation. Just uh, to recap. We uh, stated the purpose of this presentation. We defined in brief terms what uh, content analysis is. Um, we answered the question whether uh, content analysis was a suitable technique uh, for this study, and we said that the answer was absolutely yes. Uh, we talked about the validity and reliability of, of this study. Uh, we also uh, talked briefly about the content of the study and the stakeholders, and we finally uh, talked a little bit about the six categories of content analysis and uh, how those uh, categories were used in this study. Thanks for watching. I hope that this presentation has been informative and useful.